what's up YouTube welcome to the channel scuba travel and adventure Thomas here today is a late day in November which is November 26 and I'm able to sneak out on a motorcycle ride which is uh, amazing I always love that and we're looking at uh, almost 15 well it is 15 degrees at this moment uh, when I left the home it was uh, only plus four uh, but uh, right now uh, I decided to head out for a shorter ride uh, I don't want to head out towards the mountains uh, because there's snow gonna be there that's guaranteed because uh, all the ski resorts are already open but uh, just here I, since I live in South Calgary I'm heading a uh, little bit southeast uh, towards uh, McGregor Lake I haven't been there before myself I want to see what it is and where is that lake what it is all about there's also McGregor Provincial Park apparently weekend uh, I had time off and uh, I decided to do some work on my bike uh, it was due to some maintenance uh, I thought I gonna do a little bit more uh, but uh, I skipped the replacement of the brakes uh, I did the rear brakes in the midsummer but the front is still good so anyways uh, last weekend I was working on my front wheel bearings so those got replaced I have a brand new bearings uh, in the front now I took the back uh, about two months ago and uh, at the same time while I was at it I decided to change uh, front forks oil and uh, if you haven't seen the videos uh, go back to my channel and the reviews and tutorials should be able to find uh, how to do those um, simple procedures and uh, at the same time they're pretty crucial to maintain uh, your bike properly another thing what I did uh, which is quite a big thing I did my first uh, valve adjustment I posted on Facebook so how much they were out and everything uh, they were not out by that much, but uh, I skipped the first uh, maintenance of the valves or valve check, however you want to call it. And uh, uh, my bike right now is sitting at 38,000 uh, kilometers, so that's, that's basically due for the second valve check, which I have performed. Uh, I tell you one thing, that job is pretty crazy. There is a lot of work to get into it. The actual job itself, once you know what you're doing and follow the shop manual, which is listed under files on uh, CRF 1000 uh, Facebook group, so you can download it and uh, if you have a little bit of mechanical skills, you can tackle that job but be very careful uh, you will need a few special tools to um, to measure the valves uh, for example like the caliper or a micrometer whatever you want to use to measure those uh, um, shims and also you will need the, uh, the tool to measure the gap on your intake and exhaust valves so once you measure everything and I would recommend do it twice do it three times don't just go by the first measurement if you get all the measures every measurement the same every time then go ahead and start disassembling the camshaft and all that stuff that has to come out uh, don't get into it unless you have your measurements correct because that's very important you want to be as close as possible to the um, manufacturer specs and they don't give you that much of the tolerance so this region here 
It is a prairie region uh, in Alberta. As you see, everything here is uh, just uh, farmland. So we have a lot of farms for those that are not uh, from around here. So on the other side behind me, that's where the mountain range is. I always enjoy that when there is no major wind, especially now in a uh, winter season, so oh, it's still fall, but we're getting close to the winter season. Uh, we already had snow uh, two days ago, actually. But uh, the Chinook wind from the mountains came in, uh, and everything melted uh, very quickly. We had not much, uh, probably about uh, one or two centimeters on the ground, and uh, the Chinook wind took care of it uh, pretty quickly. So I haven't been on a bike for quite some time now. And uh, I was itching to get my bat on it and take it for a short spin. And especially take the advantage of the beautiful day. It's supposed to be even warmer on a weekend. Un unfortunately, I have to work uh, this weekend. So it's a my working weekend. I work every second weekend, so it's not an option. But it's supposed to hit even warmer temperatures than we had today. Yesterday was actually even warmer, but I had a couple things to do. I couldn't get out on a bike. Usually this is not my preference to ride here in the prairies. It's uh, not as interesting, but it satisfies the needs. Going back to the wave adjustment, one thing that I have noticed uh, when I was taking the bike apart, and uh, it doesn't make sense to me, is that I had a lot of dust uh, right on top of the throttle body. It didn't go uh, past the throttle body, but I had a lot of dust in there. and. Uh, I don't get it where it came from because uh, I look in the airbox and uh, the airbox was actually very clean. It didn't have a speck of dust. But uh, once you uh, once I took the airbox out of the throttle body and uh, looked down uh, after the rubber uh, connectors uh, with the rings, uh, the, there was quite a bit actually of sand and oily deposits on there. Um, uh, yes, I was riding quite a bit off-road, but uh, to my understanding, normally that sand uh, and dust should get stopped at the air filter or air intake. And I do use uh, twin air high-performance air filters. Uh, they were maintained uh, pretty much. I check them out every year. Uh, beginning of the season, I uh, wash it and grease it, and it's good to go. I have installed them two, two years ago, so I don't have to replace them. I just wash it and uh, lube it, and they go back in. So, but, uh, but as I say, uh, the dust was not present in the airbox, just on the throttle body. It didn't have nothing past the flaps, or uh, past the injectors, I should say, maybe, uh, on the other side, but uh, it, it had quite a bit, actually, deposit on top. Not sure how it got there, and uh, not sure is that something normal, something I should worry about, or just uh, ride it. So I'm still using my new cameras, the Insta 361R. I find them they're pretty amazing, especially the last update that was released. Uh, so you don't even have to stabilize your footage anymore. Uh, I'm gonna test it after this ride. Uh, in the Insta360 software, you can just directly import it into your editing program or you can edit everything in your app if you want to. I'm not a fan of using the apps and phone for editing, that's not for me. I like the Final Cut Pro or any editing software. Wow, it's pretty empty out here. Like, not many trees, nothing. It is so different, and it's literally uh, between the mountains and here, maybe one and a half hour difference in time. 
because you can still see on the horizon the mountains and we got free flat it's got a little bit up and down uh, but uh, overall it's flat area it's nice to to grow the chick chicken strips on your tires anyways I'll get to you guys back uh, once I get a little bit closer I'm still uh, about half an hour away or so it looks like this area has uh, quite a bit of oil too because I see the pumps everywhere I'm almost there another maybe 15 kilometers uh, before I get to the park yeah, a lot of oil everywhere on top of those hills and in the farmer's fields here. And we have the price at buck 43 a liter right now in Calgary. A dollar 43 for gas. That's ridiculous. And province, the province has uh, one of the biggest uh, oil deposits. in Canada it's like a uh, lost civilization there's like nothing 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 no towns no no people no traffic some sections uh, you just get out and uh, it's like nothing anywhere oh the lake is up ahead I can see that wow that's a huge lake I didn't even know that there's a small town apparently somewhere here, it's called Milo. I think it's like 8 kilometers up ahead according to the GPS. Oh yeah, look at that lake, it's huge. I've been living here for 7 years now and I'm still discovering new places every time I get out. Lake McGregor Provincial Park, turn right. Okay, let's check this out then. Oh, dirt road. All right. Oh yeah, yeah. And this is the campground as well. if that's a man-made lake or if it's a natural lake very good question how close can I get to the water here I wonder Look at the big chunks of ice here on the shore. Let's follow the shore here a little bit. It's a pretty nice campground, I'm quite open as long as there's no wind. It should be okay, but if that would become windy, then wow, it would get quite crazy, because uh, this area usually can get quite windy. So it looks like you can get walleye in here. Well, it's quite muddy over here. Might as well turn around. I don't want to get stuck in the shit now. Not ready. I didn't go off-roading today.
had a plan to fly the drone here but look at the wind it's just ridiculous so this is uh, Lake McGregor I just got here and I'm all by myself nobody's here not a single soul probably in the summer that campground behind me it's packed but today it's all empty not a single person here so I was able to ride those little roads here or gravel trails and have some fun so let's go to the lake and check out the lake it's a beautiful day if that wasn't for the wind but it's still warm at least it's not cold that's the beauty part if you look behind me here just filming against the sun so that's not gonna be probably best footage but must be beautiful in the summer I gotta come out again once everything is green again because right now it's all gray and yellow not much of uh, colors to enjoy so as I mentioned earlier when I arrived here on those signs in front of me uh, there's a lot of walleye here apparently and uh, there's a boat launch so you can come fishing if you're into it I'm not but uh, I wonder how that would be for scuba diving though it looks pretty murky well it is clean but uh, it doesn't look like it's good visibility Here there's a boat launch area, chunks of ice because uh, overnight it gets cold. During the day, temperature rises quite drastically. There's a huge temperature difference between now and what's going to be at night. somebody owns a boat that's a perfect lake for playground get your tube get your skis and give her I used to own a bay liner years ago but too many hobbies between scuba diving motorcycles and uh, filming all the stuff um, and the maintenance on a boat uh, additional costs so I kind of give up uh, years ago with the boat stuff but that would be a perfect playground for somebody that owns a boat. Lots of room and uh, I wonder how, that, how busy it gets uh, during summer. I like the note here that you can see. Release your catch quickly, fish can't breathe out of water. Duh! <laughs> Who doesn't know that? <laughs> That's, uh, seriously. Fish can't breathe out of water. The longer the fish is out of water, the worse its chance for survival. Yep, I agree. <laughs> 